What a beautiful morning it is to worship the Lord in Ypsilanti. Greetings on this wonderful last Sunday in August, where we listen to the word from the epistle from Brother James, that every generous act is a gift from God, who gives birth to us through the word. The preacher to the Hebrews says, do good and share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. For O God, author and giver of all good things, plant in our hearts the love of your name, increase in us our faithfulness, nourish us with all goodness, bring forth in us the fruit of good works, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Well, we conclude our journey together of journeys in faith. This morning I bring to you the prophet Isaiah and his word to us of our journey in common. Beginning in the 55th chapter at the first verse. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And the you that have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me. Eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress, Instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle, and that shall be to the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, we've been journeying together these past eight weeks. Well, actually, we've been journeying together since I arrived in Ypsilanti some 21 years ago. On September 17th, I will have been ordained 26 years to the Presbyterian Church. I have moved in my journey with you and us together. It's good to move about, 
Also to survey where we're at, as I've been saying. If you're going to chart a course, you need to know where you're at and know where you're going. The Old Testament also reminds us it's good to know where you've come from. Have you not heard and have you not seen? I am the Lord your God. Where have we come from, where we are, and where are we going? In this journey together, I have a friend, she went out to Bryce Canyon in Utah. I happened to look it up real quickly. It was created on land purchased from a rancher named Bryce. When they dedicated the park, they invited rancher Bryce to share his feelings about this spectacular place where he had lived and worked for so many years. Bryce gazed out over the landscape and said, sure is a heck of a place to lose a cow. Hard to capture feelings about a place. So what can I distill at this point in our journey so far, I wondered. I'd like to suggest three things that matter, that have always mattered and continue to matter in our life together. Things for the journey. I talked early on about things we needed to take with us, that cloud of witnesses to cheer you on, a Bible to guide you as a map, and a Holy Spirit as the compass of your heart. The first thing is that faith in Christ matters, faith in Jesus. It doesn't mean just believing God exists and sent his Son. The devil believed God exists and sent his Son. Faith means being faithful. If you ask a mother if she believes in her daughter, you're not asking if she believes her daughter exists. You're asking her if she trusts her in good times and bad, has a relationship with her. Faith in Christ means that and more. It means living as though your Christ relationship is the most important reality in the world. We heard a couple of good examples of historical figures that did that. It means it becomes the lens through which you see everything, shapes your journey, your dreams, and what you're becoming. Faith's not primarily an assent to a creed. Faith's primarily about living faithfully, loyally, as God's child. As our own catechism says, you belong to God. You are a child of God. God loves you and seeks you and guides you. Now, some think faith is naive and illogical. Actually, we don't get a choice between faith and pure logic. Everyone lives by some faith. Atheism's a faith. Agnosticism's a faith by default. You know, not to decide is to decide not to choose is to choose. Some say if God exists, why didn't he create a world where there'd be no doubt about him, where his existence could be proved without question? C.S. Lewis thought about this, and he says, well, maybe God doesn't want followers who've been compelled by inconvertible truth, incontrovertible <laughs> proof that cannot be contradicted. Maybe God wants followers who have found their way to him by a journey of becoming, who trusted before all the facts were known, before the final curtain, as it were. Referring to Shakespeare, C.S. Lewis says, Othello believed in Desdemona's innocence after it was proved, but it was too late. The book of Hebrews says, Faith is a conviction of things not seen. You and I want our loved ones who believe in us when things look bad, before we're proved innocent. Maybe God wants a relationship with us based on trust, one we have to grow into and work with and stretch ourselves for, using both our heart and our mind and all our soul. Maybe that's what we want from our own children, a relationship that makes them strong, strong, loving human beings, where they love us by choice and make music only they can create. The first thing I believe,
faith in Christ matters. Second thing I believe is that community matters. I've gone on many bike trips in my younger years. I've gone on many retreats, many mission trips with the church. Now, camping is about being outdoors. You get songs and stories around the campfire. You get to do recreations and crafts, and you get to go hiking through the woods, go swimming. But most of all, even on those mission trips to help others, it's about community. It's about forming connections with one another and seeing how God is in our midst. The basic laws of small group interaction on camping goes something like this. The first day at camp, you believe, how could I have been dumb enough to come here? These are the most retarded people I've ever seen, and I wish I was home. Boy, they are annoying. Second day at camp, they're still nerds, but the pool is okay, and we're going to grill tonight. Sometime around the third day, there's a tipping point. You don't really think you're going to make it through the week. Arguments start to happen. Then someone intervenes and helps set the rudder straight again. You realize you made a couple friends, and you haven't home, phoned home since lunch. Well, the fourth day, things are starting to get better. My counselor's kind of cool, and I can't wait to get up in the morning and do things with my friends. The fifth day, these are the best friends of my life. We're going to meet after camp and do stuff and come here every year. I love these guys. Day six, mom and dad come to take you home and you cry. Relationships are what make life good. And relationships take a little time. Those that study group interactions report that it takes 13 hours to bind and build up a small group. I read a more recent one that in order to form a deep friendship, it takes 220 hours. 220 hours to make a good friend. No wonder it gets harder to make friends as we get older. You have to put in the time. I used to go on these bike trips. My pastor at the time, Dick Rogers, said he made them 12 days long, partly for logistics back in those days. Kids had a little more time off in August, but mostly so that the kids would have bonus time after that four days of becoming best friends, and it worked. People came back year after year. I was with my family two years ago on vacation to a little place, Wilderness Ranch, in the Manistee Forest. We were on a hayride there together that night, and I was saying where I was from. People were introducing themselves, and a fellow in front of me said he was from Munster, Indiana, where I grew up. I said, oh, I'd lived in Munster. That's where I went to high school, where my parents at that time, still living, were living. The gentleman next to him said, well, I didn't grow up in Munster, but I used to go on these bike trips at this church there. He was from a suburb of Chicago, just south, about 10 miles away. Turns out we were on a bike trip together. There were some 60 kids back in 1980 on that trip together, with about 12 college and ministers leading it. And we remembered the shared faces, the shared people, the relationship. The community was purposely built in opportunities to create that interaction, to share an experience, to remember the experience, and to support each other. No put-downs were allowed. Your buddies, you could embrace them and believe in you. It was transforming. For many, it was a new experience. Normal school culture wasn't like that. It was kind of clicky and competitive. So no wonder I went back year after year for some 14 years. Community is hard to find in ordinary life. It takes time, shared experiences, trust, and acceptance. Where can you find community when you're too old for camp? Of course, some like Phyllis just keep camping, which is delightful. Second thing I believe, community matters. Third thing I believe in is this congregation matters. 
Over and over I've heard from people who've moved saying, I can't find a church like Ypsilanti that's just kind of down to earth but deep. Makes us all proud and a little sad. For this is a world without much grace where faith can be difficult. And too often we live without much affirmation, without community. Well, we try to do things around here based on community and faith, where people can live into their gifts and grow in faith and celebrate their journey in good times and hard times together. For we have to remember both to be true to ourselves and our God. Our vision is to glorify God, to grow in faith, to go in service, to generate a community of grace and generosity. That's our vision. Some days we do it better than others. Someone once said, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. I've learned that a group travels better than one alone. Simply put, if you're bicycling, the group breaks the wind for you. You can go a little faster and a little longer, provides moral support, shares community, sometimes even parts. We journey together in baptism, in educating our children in children's church, in exploring mission together in celebration of worship and growing in difficulties to challenge ourselves to stand up for what is right and what is true, for what is good even. God has millions of communities. This one in my heart is special. A missionary who used to visit us regularly looked at all we did and said, you were small, but you were mighty. I said, I can live with that engraved over the door. We are small, but we are mighty. Like David, not that other guy. Other people in the area, other churches, they admire us for our community service, our music program, our outreach over the years through Young Life to Youth and college students our perseverance as times have changed. We've inspired over, as I said before, three young people into full-time Christian service and one to be a young adult volunteer for a couple years of her life. We've parented men and women to be better parents. We've cried with those who have faced death. We have mourned with those who mourn. We have celebrated graduations, homecomings, taken delight in hearing stories of people when they were young, who are now old, who come and walk through it and see the memories walking around still, an anchor in the midst of differences and change sometimes, but also a place that has grown and inspires and continues to stretch. We are not the church we were in 1968, nor 1988. We're the church of 2021, but there is a ribbon of peace and truth and love that runs through it, a place where people can experience grace, lives are changed, children experience belonging, learn the music of love, where community and faith come together. So this morning, I just want to celebrate at the end of our journey, at least this sermon series, these three things that matter faith in Jesus, walking in community, affirming this congregation. May the journey continue, as indeed it will. To God be the glory forever and ever. Amen.
our hearts be united in prayer. Almighty God, you lead us and guide us on our journey in faith. You have given us your word as a map for our life. Your spirit has lit a pillar of smoke by day and fire by night to lead us and hold us by your law so that we too could be your people for you have elected to be our God. When the people called upon you, you came down off the mountain and led Moses, guided him and charged him to lead the people out of slavery, to walk on dry land through the sea to the promised land. You sent prophets to call us back to true worship of a true heart, not of outward appearances, but an inward spirit you sent your only Son, Jesus of Nazareth, born of Mary, fathered by Joseph, and guided by your Spirit, overcoming and denying temptations to walk in the way of the world. You walked in your way, showing us that we too could be upon the way with him. And as we walk with him, he taught us and healed us held us and charged us that we too could be like him, to do deeds of justice, acts of kindness, present mercy and healing, to feed the people as indeed he fed us. So we ordain ministers to the gospel and elders to guide and deacons to serve, to preach the gospel in good times and in hard to inspire people to repent and to believe, to be changed and born anew. So behold, Lord, that we are but empty vessels that need to be filled. And fill us. For we are weak, strengthen us. For we are cold in love, warm us and make us fervent. That our love may go out to our neighbor. When we do not have a strong and firm faith, when we doubt and are unable to trust you altogether, O oh Lord, help our unbelief, strengthen our faith and trust in you. For you have sealed in us the treasure of yourself. For we are poor, but you are rich. You came to be merciful to the poor. I am a sinner and you are upright. With me there is an abundance of fault in you is the fullness of righteousness. Therefore, I will remain with you whom I can receive, but to whom I may not give. But you give us all that we need. Help us to turn to you in prayer as we pray for our brothers and sisters in faith. For those who are ill, bring them healing. For those who are dispirited, give them encouragement. For those who are poor, Give them enough. For those who are haughty, lay them low, but with mercy. Soul of Christ, sanctify in us and save us, as indeed you do. I pray now for our church in Ypsilanti to be a light unto the people, to sing songs of joy and praise preach the truth of your gospel, to do your work in our midst that you present to us, to help us be faithful, to be of good cheer, to lay hold of the joy that you have promised. I pray for families who I know are suffering of illness, of need for good work, to feel more surety in their place of employment or care. have affection of good neighbors. As we return to school for guidance for parents and teachers, joy for the children, and safety for all. May you keep us as indeed you do. In Christ I pray, who taught us to pray, 
Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We go nowhere by accident. Wherever we go, God is sending us. Wherever we are, God has put us there. For God has a purpose in our being there. For Christ who dwells in us has something he wants to do through us, where we are right now. Believe this and go in the grace and love and power of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. 